Good afternoon, it's wee Paddy from Across the Shock and you are so welcome to this really special edition. Um, and this is, I started off with, uh, I just watched yesterday, I didn't, wasn't able to watch it live, but I watched it uh, during the night, um, was the Thrifty and uh, Slippy Show, or Slippy and Thrifty, whichever way they come. But a great pairing, great friends, and they done a show on Rosecraft Blades. And picking their favourite, and they were doing a uh, a poll of the the best what people thought were the best Rosecraft knives. And I said at the end of it that a great show. I'll do my top five when it's over. Well, that didn't work out. That's what I started with. But what I've ended up with is this, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. It's going to last a bit of time because it's one of my videos. But this might last a wee bit longer because for me it's really special. And it's coming near that time of the year, Christmas. Yeah, I said it's my, I think it's my first time I've mentioned Christmas. But I, I, I do want to get this out because I believe that some of the knives I've picked here, or maybe some of the companies you have not used or you have not tried them out. These are going to be my industry champs, companies that have, that have come in in the last couple of years because going back a year is just not long enough. A, a couple of years, a few years, some of them are going back to even further than that, uh, i.e. Chris Reeve has been going back for years. He's, he's been doing it for 20 odd years. But to me, these are the, the, the industry champs at design, functionality, fit and finish, everything as a knife lover and I am more than anything else I'm a knife lover I am a collector but I'm also a YouTuber so I've got to figure price in somewhere there that's middle of the road but I've got to I'll not pick a company just because of price it has to have all the things that I look for in a custom knife and that sounds strange but it's true it has to have all them details but just made in a production way so I've got some custom makers here that I think if you haven't looked at, maybe you're new to this channel, and usually there's 50% that come along that are maybe new to the channel, they're not subscribers. Well, this is the time I would love you to subscribe because I want you to go back and, and look at some of these that I've reviewed in the past. And there's maybe more than one or two of that knife company. Some there's many more of, but they're the ones. The ones that I have the most of are the ones that that are reasonably priced, but give a super high quality fit and finish. But here's the, here's, the, here's the kicker. It has to be designed right. It has to be a design that speaks to me. And, and we're all like that. And my designs are not going to suit you, but these are my designs. So, you know, that's what I've got to show. They're my designs and knives that I kept. Now, there's a couple of these companies that, uh, that I get knives for free. I'll let you know which ones they are. And I got them free. But it in no way detracts on what I think of the knife. N in no way. No way at all. Because they're just knives that I've kept in my collection. So I'm going to just kick it off. And I'm going to kick it off with one that you see on the top of my channel. Every single video. And it's this. And it's by Mr. Medford. Love him or hate him. This man is willing to put his dollar down on the table and try and create something new, something innovative, something that I think has legs to run uh, and will last. I hope it does because this one I was given for free and he actually put this on it, my little leprechaun on the front of it, and he put PPP there, which I thank him for truly. This is just an amazing, innovative design. It's This is the posh version of a pocket multi-tool. Now, it has hints of Victorian Ox because you get different blades. You get multiple blades in one knife. One, you get... There is different blade shapes you can get for it. This is the spear point, which is, to me, a genuine spear point. It has a beautiful grind. You can see that Medford grind. That is there on purpose. 
It is a beautiful grind. This one is in S45 BN, but they're in MagnaCut, all sorts of others, S45. Mine just happens to be S45, which is just fantastic. A super steel on a small multi-tool, which just is fantastic. And it also has the different tools that you'll have maybe on Victorian Ox, like the bottle opener, the small screwdriver. This is an amazing little tool, it's a scraper. Uh, this could be used as a nail puller or a wrench, uh, but the scraper is just super on it. Love the scraper. This is the, the basic model. Uh, you buy this basically, and it's about £220. It is dear, but all the tools, all the back springs are all made of the blade material that you're getting on it. So it's completely high end. And it costs, I think it's about £220 here in the UK. A lot of money. Um, these are just plastic scales, but they're nice plastic scales, done well. Uh, let's not run it down. And of course, he promotes his American flag there, which he has every right to, and he is a proud American. This is just a super idea because, unlike Victorian X, this can be taken apart. It's modular. You can make two, three, four layer ones, single layer ones. You can do what you want with it. And I think that is super. Uh, Albeit pricey, that's the way things are. You know, it's it's pricey, and this is pricey to make. The design in this will have cost millions. Just simple, getting this put together and get it millions. So, I really do like that. Innovative, you know, but innovative. There's lots of people can be innovative, innovative, innovative. Uh, it, yeah, you know what I mean. But to invest your own money in something like this and the long design process that goes into doing something like that. That shows me commitment. That shows me somebody who wants to stay. He doesn't want to just have an overnight success. He's willing to put the time in and the effort. That I like. That really pleases me. So Medford, and he does, he's been doing more and more smaller knives that are for the every man rather than the big, chunky, heavy ones, which are beautiful. And I've owned a couple and paid for, uh, one, two, three, three Medfords I paid for myself. This is the only one I had for free. But the more expensive ones I paid for by myself. So next I'm going to go on to that we had this this last couple of years we've had an amazing amount of new companies that are coming out whether they be American led Chinese made or American made American made uh, and you know I was talking about Chris Reeves he is they changed up Chris is retired his wife and his son are sort of run the business now his son's taken over more and more to do with it and this is a new design of the 21. This is a 31 with a full uh, cover on them. Or you can get them naked. It doesn't really matter. There's slight changes in the design, but nothing that you wouldn't recognize it as a 21 sort of a pattern. Nothing. You know, a lot It's a lot of it is the same. Some of the, you know, you have the decanted uh, scale now, so it's not pressing on the lock bar. But they have kept that beautiful drop point blade and you can get others as well um, but it's just this to me is knife perfection that genuinely mean that it's my favorite knife in my collection because of how it sits in my hand I have a large hand and it only just gets on but it's so comfortable and this blade is still that Chris Reeve hollow grind I just stabbed myself again me and this camera are going to fall out soon this is just top of the range for me. Very expensive, yes, but to me it was worth it because it is my knife. It, it really is the beautiful, quintessential, high-end pocket knife, locking pocket knife. Uh, and for me to spend that much money on a locking knife means that I have to really like it. Um, and that, let me go on. Here, this is a, a totally all-American. Here's an Amer American-designed um Chinese made and this is Jack Wolf and I mean I have so many Jack Wolves that I can show you this is one that I didn't particularly like at first but I've grown thought to fall in love with it I, sort of again um this is the locking version of the Jack Wolf knife and he makes lots of just slip joints but this is a locking version um S90V the most beautiful grinds I think in the the industry at the minute the hollow grinds are just amazing on it. This titanium knurling is just stunning. 
absolutely stunning. Pocket clip, beautiful. In at the top, just a beautiful, beautiful pocket clip. Again, this is innovative that somebody has come out with these designs and have put the design feeling into all his knives. So Ben has just done an amazing job. Absolutely amazing. I'll set these over here as I'm going through them. Yeah, take that off. Um, and here's another um, all-American company. They used to make pens. Well, they still make pens, tactile turn pens, but they went in the knife making. This was their first iteration into that. And this is one I just had to have. Again, it's about a £200 knife. This is just stunning. It's their first slip joint. Look at that clip point. I just love everything about it. The little nail neck. It's a double nail neck, if you like. It is beautiful. They have the same knurling. There we are. You can see it. The same knurling on the titanium handles that they have in their pens, which has made their pens so distinctive. That it is so thin. This is a slicer. People talk about, oh, this is a great slicing knife. There's nothing I think can beat this, you know, and then the quality. This is in Magna Cut, which is the one that I really wanted. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic. It They had a few teething problems in the beginning. Um, but, I mean, even this, it's slightly off. It is slightly off. The backspring is not completely but I honestly, as a little carry knife, this is my everyday carry knife. I carry this every single day. It's in my little wallet and I am covered for anything. I, I, I know I always carry a few knives, but this is my everyday carry. And it took it a long while to become that, but it's there. It's there. It's my everyday carry. And I can't see that changing anywhere near the near future. It's so slim to go on a pouch. That's what makes a difference. And then I'm going to go to a Canadian maker this year. And this is somebody who only has one knife out. But I think it's worth it. I got this for free. Um, is it why I'm showing it? Absolutely not. This is a friction folder, which is something a lot of people shy away from. But this, if you want to try one friction folder, this is the one to try. Because this is a super EDC knife. Now, I got a special... Uh, my card of covers on mine uh there's an and the reason i'm really promoting this one especially is there is more of these coming in stock at frank over at frame our knives who also has a good selection of jack wolf knives so if you want to get maybe some of the ones that are sort of out of stock in a lot of places frank has a collection now of jack wolf knives that you can buy from his shop there and then you're not ordering them he has them in stock just go and contact Frank the normal ways, his telephone number, or just email him. All the details, you'll find it all on Google for Frank. It's frameornaves.co.uk. Just go on there and get on to Frank and get them. But there's a new batch of these coming in. This is a custom maker. It's a one-man band. Uh, a CNC machine, heavily machine sheet, but all his designing, all his work, he put a lot of years into getting this knife to where he could bring it to market. The first batch went very, very quickly. And now there's a second batch coming in. And then, look, this is what makes this. Look at that blade. Can you see that stepping? That CNC mill stepping. It is amazing. It's in 20 CV. This is not your ordinary uh, friction folder. It's just not. It is outstanding outstanding you can tighten or loosen it whatever you want to do i have mine quite firm because it's the way i like it there is beautiful jimping which is just lined completely with the the jimping on the uh, micarta and when you put your thumb there you're not going to close that unless you take the thumb off if you keep the thumb there that's not going to close no matter how hard you hit it it's not going to close on you so that's the fear of most people uh, with a friction folder, you're sort of tied to having that one position hold because you need to hold that um, when you're cutting. So you're in that position, but most of us cut like this anyway. But this, and again, 20 CV, that is just an exceptional blade. And, it, you know, he didn't even just finish it here. He went right round on the Ricasso. Uh, just gorgeous knife. See my reviews in this. New ones are coming in, but he's also coming in with definite different designs of micarta. 
uh, with other there's other materials that is all coming in. I'm going to leave that until I get the full details, but it's going to be coming very very shortly. And this is one if you want a friction folder, it is stunning. It is stunning, and a little gentle push, and that knife is not coming out of there. This does not, it's not an obtrusive in your pocket. Just throw it in. I throw mine in naked, and I've never had a slight problem with it whatsoever. I just love it. Fit and finish, just the design of it, everything about it in hand. It is beautiful, beautiful in hand. So that's coming soon. And that's what I love, design. This man put, uh, this is Joe La Pietra, uh, his design, uh, just stunning. He'll be on the show soon with uh, the new offering. So there we go. Now, the, uh, let's go to, let's go to Arthur Wright and Sons. Over this last few years, I mean, I've been promoting them. So many other people are getting them, promoting them as just genuinely great working knives. Now, a lot of companies claim it, but a lot of companies are wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to say that. These are handmade in the traditional fashion pocket knives. There ain't any of the big organizational companies like this none of them are handmade they have hand finishing but these are handmade just saying just saying true traditional handmade knives with the proper old machinery it's a tradition it's not going to set the world on fire they're making work knives but they're making good work knives they were taken over about 10 years ago i think maybe a little bit longer um by Michael and Ashley Harrison and they have lifted this company from near I'm sure it would have been near bankruptcy and brought it back into the the modern world with their their desire to improve the fit and finish and they have done that it's a long slow process because these there's there's only three people in the shop and most of the time there's only two able to work and make knives and they make and not a lot of knives. The working knives are just as they say, they're working knives. You might get a little gap down the side, but let me tell you, Arthur Wright are out well renowned for their great spring strength. I mean, the knives are just nearly impossible. When you're putting your finger down here, to close that is nearly impossible. You have to have a really strong push. This is a stunning one. This was just out in Heine. They're now... Uh, um, joining forces with Heine and they brought a big batch of these out uh, sold them on Heine um, this is just a stunning knife they put red liners in it again that just that little change it's nothing massive but it is definitely significant for the working knives that they are I think it made a huge difference um, just super absolutely super now I, I got given this one i'm just going to be right up front uh you can call me a shill whatever you like i don't care because i know that they sold out already at heine already going and heine don't buy tiny amounts they sold out are we going to get more i flip and hope so because i want more and more people to realize that the uk's knife making is coming back it is definitely, it's a revival. They're coming back. And it's this company alone, that I think, are pushing it. Because we have other companies here. And we have other companies that can make good knives. And, and here's, the, here's the killer, because I'm just going to say it out loud, because it upsets me. Because some of the other companies here in the UK, they have the ability to make good knives. Like these, they're all made by hand. They've, they've got the ability to do it. But they're fit and finish. Is just not being kept on top of. And that is so sad. Uh, so sad for me to say it. And I hope that when they see what Arthur Wright are doing, they're going to change and, and become more and more um, able to look after their fit and finish. It does matter. And fit and finish, in a, in a budget knife like these are, I mean, there's only there's under, under £40. They don't have to be immaculate. But they do have to be good. There has to be at least a decent pull in a knife, especially a slip joint. I think there has to be a decent pull. It doesn't have to be as strong as arthrite. I buy them because that's what I want. It's a beautiful knife. Everything about this is just a great working knife. But I also collect them because I like them. Um, 
customs. Here's another custom. This is a custom maker that I came across this year. Uh, I didn't know anything about it. I'd heard of them and I'd seen pictures on Instagram and things like that. But uh, this is a handmade knife. Completely handmade. The jigging is done on that beautiful bone which is dyed by the maker and then jigged. Have you ever seen bone as nice as that? This is uh, Shan Ching. Ching Shan? Ch <laughs> This is Shing. <laughs> he was on our program. One of the nicest, down to earth and funny, just somebody who wants to look after you. That's the sort of custom maker he is. But this is beautiful. And this is, do you know, I'm going to call it this, and I haven't really called it. This is very similar in a lot of ways to the infamous Case Sodbuster. Very, very similar, except let's bump it up a whole lot of notches because this sort of bone, look at this on either side, not the same, but it just looks as if it's been picked. Well, it was picked and jigged exactly for this knife. Um, it's a beautiful, nice thin blade, uh, hand rub satin finish in magna cut. In the cut, a little pocket knife like this from a single, just a maker, absolutely super. And he does nearly any blade steel you want. If he can get it, he'll make it for you. And just a genuine gent, a lovely, lovely man. This is just such a comfortable knife in hand. It's going to be a bit thicker than most of the uh, uh, case knives, but just beautiful and absolutely joy. A calm tang, smooth as you like. Slap down, slap in the middle. This is a stunning knife. So, Xing Chan, uh, Chan Xing, um, please go and check him out. Just check him out. Xing, he's on Instagram, Facebook. Check him out. Go back and watch the video. This is a custom maker. And especially if you're going to the Sharp Show this year, he's going to be there, as is Frank from Premar Knives. Um, Bladebridge is going to be there. Um, and there might be a couple of other little surprise people and knives there for you to see. But this Ching, highly recommend him. Nice man. And we're going to go to my favourite of all time. This is my custom maker of choice. This is who I stick with. Uh, I, I buy other knives, don't get me wrong. Uh, I buy all these. This, these are not given. This is Ashley Harrison. Of the father and son duo at Arthur Wright's. And this year, actually, I got Ashley to make me this large boulder um, in my favourite pattern. Just look at that, Barlow. And tell me this is not... Yeah, I've got scratches on it. Imagine that, scratches on a knife. I use this. I love this. I think it's beautiful. This is in Turkish walnut. This has got his design on the back of it. And it's like bejeweled. All you've got to do is turn it and it looks bejeweled. It is beautiful. All the way round. It is just a stunning, stunning knife. Handmade completely by Ashley. And the clip is just perfection. That's what a Barlow clip should look like. Um, and I do enjoy the larger Barlow. They do a small Barlow. And, you know, they do the small Barlow, uh, which is down to about here. But this is extended. And uh, I think it's going to become more and more popular because it actually really suits the bulbous end everything about it but this is my favorite absolute favorite slip joint just i adore it i, I just it's perfection to me this is what it, this is this is perfection you can have different put together uh parts of a barlow but this with this blade in 01 tool steel uh do you know what i mean that's under 200 pound sorry just can't beat Custom, can't be under 200. Can't be beat. Cannot be beat. Oh, super snap on it. But, and here's the but, which is going to link us back up to um, Slippy and Thrifty. The knives underneath here are of a USA designer and company owner providing jobs in the US for people 
and he has other designers that, that create other designs for locking knives, for fixed blades, for all sorts. This is a US designer who is leading this company into the future. And I hope the future is bright. And although it's suggested that maybe even in 10 years time they might be in the US, I just wouldn't move. And I know that's terrible to say, but what they're getting now and what they're building up with a Chinese OEM is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And this is from Andy at over at Rosecraft Blades. And that's where the link started because I was trying to pick my top five Rosecraft Blades. Didn't get there. Sorry, just didn't get there. And this is where it set off that I just wanted to do this whole sort of thing. We're on 25 minutes, so I'm going to try and cut this down to about 15 minutes because looking is all you need for this company. This company, I think this millennium, has the biggest has had the biggest effect on the slip joint collectors worldwide. Worldwide. And that's a hell of a statement, isn't it? It really is. His designs have been... Some, like the Barlow, I mean, just look at this Barlow. Look at my Ashley. Let's look at that Barlow together. That is a beautifully made Barlow. Beautifully made Barlow. All the things I want in a Barlow. I love the wood in a Barlow. I love the little paw print on here. It's not in your face. Sometimes in the light you can't even see it. But again, it's got the nice enough pull. It's got that. But he has this blade. And Andy never changed because that is a stunning clip point. It's so fat all the way through right to here. It is just gorgeous. The nicest uh, outside of a, a, a British clip point that I think I've ever seen. I, I just think that is class. Absolute class. And yes, made in China but the design had to get to China and Andy has just got the design thing that uh, such a simple knife the Barlow is but you can get it wrong so easily this to me is his best creation so far because of that fact it's a simple design hundreds of thousands of different ways to put it together but this is his way and that blade topped it off for me because they've been doing the wood now for a while and that's I think that's the best bit of wood that I have seen so far. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So there he is. Andy's doing the design. And I couldn't pick my top five. Because you'll find all these down here are single blades. They also do double bladed ones. I'm not really a double bladed person. I do like the ones that come out in double blades. But a friend of mine has them now. Um, because he enjoys them. But the single blade ones. I can't even get rid of them. Do you know what I mean? I can't, if, if I really like it, I, I, I just do not want to pass them away. And I get these all for nothing. So they usually go to my friends. At a very small price. Because I have to keep the channel going. But, I mean, it's just it's one of them things. But what I've, what I've shown you now, here's a, here's a lot down here. In the last couple of years, please tell me another company, be it, for slip joints, lockers, whatever, have had this many designs done, had this many blade materials, or not blade materials, but um, handle materials done, covers, whatever you want to call them. Have a, I don't think there's another company. Well, in fact, I would, I'm would. i going to put it out there. You give me another company that has designed this many knives in this great blade steel, D2, they haven't had to change that because it's with well, the way they have it done, it's fantastic. I can't get mine to rust. I can't get mine to even die. This is my most used, and I use this for I use this for eating. Um it is starting to go a little bit grey in places, but this is what I cut my steak with on a regular basis. You can't even say it is going a little bit grey in places, but I've had this since I came out, and this is just a big knife. I love it in hand. This is a big working knife. This is what you want to go to work with. Absolutely. Just, I don't have no measurements here at all. I'll check at the end of it. But it is a super knife. And look at the bone. So, I mean, look, you can see there's lots of different patterns. There's bone. There's uh, stag. 
there's wood, different wood, different redwood, yellowwood, blackwood, uh, rosewood. They're just they're, they're coming more and more. But the bone is the one things that I want you to. These are all bone, and this one here, all bone, and this. This is jig bone. This is the only jig bone one they've done. I want more proper jig bone. Uh, but these are all bone. And I, anyone at all, you can tell me to pick up. This is one of the newest. You pick that bone up, look around the sides. There is no white blotches. You know, it. it is completely dyed properly. And that's what I'm noticing in all their knives. They're dying. Here, I'm going to, I wrote a list of things because you know the way as a, review you like to write a list of things down i don't do it that often but i just didn't want to miss any of these because i want to go over this and like there's so many different patterns here it could i could spend a, a day going through them this is a usa design knife made in china I, I wouldn't hide away from it i just wouldn't hide away from it because they're making bloody good knives sorry they are and i'm outside of america so i don't have to go by their rules this is the rules that I have. If it's a good knife, it's a good knife, and I will want to spend money on it. They're the industry best at dying. Whoever's doing as OEM, no idea who they are. They're the industry best as far as I have seen. I haven't seen anybody else that is doing a complete dye that looks finished. It looks as if it was done with care and attention. There you go. The attention to detail and fit and finish because they're making them in good quantities. Really good quantities now. They're flying off the shelves. Their attention to detail, fit and finish is par excellence for a knife that is going to be from sorry, the high 60s down to low 50s. Their knives are in that range. There's The stag one was a wee bit dearer but worth every penny off it because it's a lovely bit of stag. Their material choices, it's such a change. You have wood, you have stag, you have G10, uh, you have bone. I mean, it's just denim, uh, sorry, micarta, denim micarta. They, they, they're they mixing it up just fantastic. They, they, you keep thinking of the, I wish they would stop doing that. And usually by the time it's come out of your mouth, they have another different material they're using for covers, which is just keeping it so fresh. So, so fresh. I mean, the, the colours that really stand out for me is this blue and this green. I think they are immaculate. I think they're just brilliant. This, which wouldn't be one of my favourite knives. He's not, this, see, there's another. He's not afraid to do different designs. This is a design. I know my mate, Baldy Blades, love this, loves this knife. I don't know others because... You can get right up, and it's a little work knife. It's a little stubby knife, thick stock. You can get in, poke, do boxes, whatever you want. Just aesthetically doesn't please me at all. But I do love that denim. That is some of the nicest denim I've ever seen. It actually looks like a pair of jeans. A lot of denim just doesn't. That does look like a pair of jeans, and I think it's beautiful. I would love to see it on a, a Barlow or a single-bladed knife anyway, another single-bladed knife. Maybe not so way out. So their material choices is brilliant. The D2 they have, honestly, it is must be well heat treated because I've used it, I've stropped it, I've sharpened it, and it's just fantastic. And it hasn't changed. It hasn't. I've not heard anybody complain about the D2 and these knives. Not one person. And here's here's the big kicker for me. As a, as a slip joint guy, I like single blades. Just that's who I am. These are all single blades. We've got double blades. And again, I say they're fantastic. It is world. But I carry and use single blades more than double. Not saying I don't carry double because I do. But my biggest thing, and a lot of people's, especially in the, in the, the slip joint, single blades are just the biz. They are just, when they're done well, they're comfortable in hands. You don't have anything working against them. I just think they're amazing. So that's why they do the biggest choice of single blades out there now.
Now, they don't have the repertoire of case, but I'm telling you, they're going to get it. If they keep bringing them out in the quantity, they're bringing them out in a decent quantity. And the, the reason that there's a couple of these I wanted to bring out, the one was the Canadian maker, Joe La Pietra. That's coming out. That's a Christmas knife. If you want to buy a Christmas knife, it's going to be about £180. But you can also buy the scales separate this time. Hopefully, that you'll get them with them. So that's coming. But these are going to, they have some coming out. For Christmas. Now, Slippy has, has said it on good information that there's some of the knives coming out are going to beat what is my top knives which are in here. And I'm going to point out a few that is really my top knives. This one, the Nullachaki. The Barlow is absolutely amazing. This little knife, the little teardrop, is stunning. This I use probably the most. This slips in my jammy pockets. It slips in the fifth pocket. It's just a super little, it's a single bladed. But it's about the same size as a number 15 boy's knife. So I can still get four fingers on it. Still get the four fingers on this wee knife. And it's got two and a half inches of cutting edge. Absolutely super. That'll do my day. That can be my main carry. Because I also always have my... Uh, bear knife in my uh, pouch so this is just my everyday user i adore this little knife fit and finish gorgeous as normal so we've got that's one of my favorite that's one of my favorite that is a thing of beauty and i absolutely adore it so i would say out of them all that three are probably my favorite this is probably one of my most well it is one it's my most used one um but i love the fact you've got all different shapes sizes blade materials that's so important so important to me because it just looks fantastic as i said if you want to collect something you have to like the look of it it can't look all the same unless you're slippy who just likes black but he has a a thing on death which he should talk about openly and two friends i think there you go uh, so that that's it i mean this to me at uh, this millennium this is the company that has shook up the world the most really has it shook up the world for affordable knives that are made to a high specification that are made with completely different blade materials or blade uh, oh for goodness sake Stephen cover materials handle materials they're just knocking it out of the park because they're doing them different it's not the same thing coming out over and over again and I, I just can't praise Andy enough uh, I'm so glad to be a, a representative for them and I'll shill them all day long because these are superb and if you're looking if you're just on a, a, a budget and you're looking to buy your dad your mom your brother a knife this Christmas do not go past these and apparently these new ones coming out in the next it says shortly they'll be coming shortly to a shop near you do not hang about because everybody else is going to have that same idea. They're not going to let the next one that comes out go because it might be there for Christmas. There's a few more coming on the line. I'm not saying you have to rush completely, but I wouldn't hang about. These are so popular now throughout the world that no matter how many they make, they're going to sell. So get out there. And if you've got ones that you like, check around all the dealers who've got them. Check right and see what's there. And if you want to get one for Christmas, this is honestly all below 70 quid. They're just amazing. Some of them just over 50. There you go. That's it. That is my designing and uh, manufacture. Whoever you are, they're, they're, they're just doing an amazing job. Right. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit different. I added one. Thrifty and Slippy, thank you very much. This set off trying to pick my top five. I couldn't. I can't. They're just so many good knives. I genuinely mean it. And I'm one that would... If I did, if I sat down, I probably could and done it seriously. But this led me off in another direction and away it went. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry it was a bit long because I had to take this long. Because, you know, of this year... All these knives are this year, and I'm, I'm just chuffed to have them. Absolutely chuffed. Take care. Paddy's gone. Have a nice cup of tea. Bye now.